everybody, I'm Miss Susie from Monroe Street Art Center and we are so excited that it is getting to be springtime outside. The snow is melting and little bits of green grass and leaves are starting to peek out and it is just so refreshing after such a long winter. So we are going to be making some spring inspired projects today. First, we are gonna start with these cherry blossoms. We're gonna use tissue paper to create all these big beautiful cherry blossoms on our tree. Have you ever seen a cherry blossom tree? They're so, so beautiful. So we're gonna be making that today and we're gonna to get to play around a little bit with what we wanna put in our background too. So from your art kit, here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need your sky blue piece of cardstock and it's a, a bit thicker paper. You're gonna need your paintbrush and this is a nice big paintbrush so you can make a nice big tree trunk and big branches. You'll need a glue stick. Then you're gonna need all these little pieces of pink tissue paper. You're gonna need your cup of brown paint. And then you might also want to use your markers, maybe your permanent marker for your background. And then you're also gonna wanna grab maybe a pencil and a cup of water for your paintbrush. Let's get started. All right, everybody. First, let's make sure we all have our supplies. So we need our sky blue cardstock. You wanna make sure you have all of your fuchsia pieces of tissue paper. You're gonna need your glue stick. I like to have some paper towels whenever I am painting using water. Grab your paintbrush, your cup of water, your brown paint. You might want a pencil and then maybe some markers for your background. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna move my stuff aside a little bit. Now you have a new paintbrush in here. It's a nice, big, thicker paintbrush. Sometimes with new paintbrushes, they can be a little firm at first. So what you wanna do is just dip it in your water. A little bit closer for you. Dip it in your water, swish it around a little bit. And then if you have some paper towels, just kind of dab it out just so that way the bristles will be nice and soft when you go to use it for the first time. That's great. So then go ahead and open up your brown paint. All right, and so first you're gonna decide, do you want your tree to go vertically like this one? I even put a little face on this guy because she's so happy it's spring. Or you can have it going horizontally like this. So that is your choice. I think today I am going to leave mine going this way. Okay, so first we just want to take a brown paint and start by just dipping our paintbrush in some paint. You don't need a lot. I just like to dab mine off on the edge. And then I'm gonna decide where do I want it? Do I wanna put it in the middle? Do I wanna put it on the side? I think what I might do today is I might do a couple trees. So I'm gonna start down here making a tree trunk. See, I just make a big, nice swoop with my brush. Now I'm using kind of like the very ends of my bristles just because I want it to be nice and wispy. I don't want it to be too heavy. And remember, eventually this is gonna get mostly covered up with our cherry blossom. I kind of want this one to have the illusion that it's sort of just half of the tree kind of coming over here. Maybe I want to make some thinner brushes. So then I'm just gonna use the edge just gonna use the edge of my paintbrush like that. And then it just comes out a little bit thinner than the larger ones. I'm gonna fill those in a little bit more. Yeah. And I went all the way up to the top because I just kinda wanna create the illusion that it's just going right off of my page. I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint here. Now, let's do another tree kind of over here. Maybe these two trees sort of next to each other, maybe in like a, a 
cherry orchard. are connecting a little bit. Goes over here. I'm doing a few trees today because I want to make it seem like there are just blossoms everywhere. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my paint. I'm starting a little thicker at the bottom for that tree trunk. And then it just gets a little thinner as I go up. branches. I'm just going to use the edge, not the, not the flat part, just the edge of my brush. So now I'm just going to create some thinner branches. or as few branches on there as you want. Like I showed you before too on this one. I gave this little tree a face. You can do that if you want. I would love to see what ideas you come up with. And you don't need to make your paint too thick. Because like I said, most of this is gonna get covered up by those beautiful branches. blossom orchard I'm creating and another reason why you don't want to do your paint too thick is so then it dries faster and you can get to adding all those tissue paper blossoms let's put some smaller ones kind of coming off of here That sound. Paintbrush on paper. I love that sound. Alright, so I'm just taking my brush and just kind of thinning out some of these thicker areas of paint. So while that's drying just a little bit more for a second, here's what we can do. We can start prepping our cherry blossoms. So I'm gonna put my brush back in water. I want to clean it off nice and good. That helps take care of our brushes so that they stay nice for a long time. So we're just gonna clean it off. And I'm gonna dab it on my paper. It's really important that we take good care of our stuff. There. So now, while this is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my tissue paper. So you probably guess what we're gonna do for this, but you're gonna take your little tissue paper squares and you're just gonna them up. I crinkle them up like that and then you're going to take your glue stick and you're going to stick them where you want them to go. All right so I'm going to take my glue stick and what I like to do is just pick a spot to start. So I'm going to start. This looks kind of like kind of a dry a dry spot. You can wait until this is totally dry. That will help make sure you don't get any brown paint in your glue stick. It'll also make sure it doesn't smudge anywhere. But like I said, because I used such a thin layer, most of this is gonna dry pretty quickly. You can sort of see the shiny parts where it needs a little bit longer to dry, but kind of up here, look, that's already dry. So I am gonna start putting my cherry blossoms on some of these dry spots. So I'm gonna put a little circle of glue right there. And I'm gonna 
cake and fridge. I'm gonna crumple it up like a little cherry blossom and then I'm just gonna stick it <laughs> right there. So now instead of being flat, it is just jumping right off the page. Isn't that cool? And you can fluff it up a little bit more. If you want, you could take scissors, you could trim some of the sides of it. So now we're just gonna keep doing this and add as many cherry blossoms as we want. All right, again, I'm gonna look at some of these drier spots. Oops, you can see this one wasn't quite as dry as I thought and it smudged a little bit of that paint, but it doesn't matter because I am gonna stick a cherry blossom right on top of it. And if you want to, you can always create some smaller cherry blossoms. You can just take one of your pieces of tissue paper and cut it in half, cut it in thirds, whatever you want. Maybe let's do a little tiny guy. I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and crinkle it up. And maybe you wanna add this little cherry bud on one of your smallest branches. So maybe let's go right over here and stick my glue. Let's get right there. See? And now that's gonna create different shapes, different sizes. Because all cherry blossoms don't look the same in an orchard. They're all different. Alright, so I am going to start filling in my cherry blossoms, and you can do the same thing. What I also want to do is now I want to create some really tiny like twigs on branches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fine tip permanent marker and I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to create some like little twigs on my branches. So here we go. Maybe I'll add some over here. And that way it'll just give you some little details. You can connect some of your cherry blossoms a little bit more to your trees. And maybe you have some like there that they don't have anything on it yet. Another thing you could do is if you wanted to, you could add some white tissue paper to this project before they turn this really beautiful, rich pink color. Sometimes cherry blossoms start out a little bit white. That could add a little bit to your project as well. Maybe there's some other details you want to add. There is no wrong way to do this project. Maybe you've got some like curvier branches. You can even start a little further down on your tree. You can still see that a little bit on top of your brown. See how it's coming off like that? And this is just gonna add some nice detail to it. And then maybe you could go back in and add some teeny tiny blossoms on some of those twigs. So you can always squish it back down over your twigs a little bit more too. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. See, that kind of adds some, some nice dimension and some nice layers, some textures on top of what you have going on. And if your hands get a little bit messy from the brown paint, that's okay. Maybe, like I said, like my other one, maybe you want to add a face to one of your trees because they're so happy. Um, maybe what I will do is down here. Like I carved it in the tree. Maybe I'll add my initials. Maybe you could do that. Maybe you wanted to leave a little hole in your tree. Stick an owl inside there. So again, right when you're close up on it, see? I left my initials in the tree. So now I'm gonna add a few more twigs. I'm gonna do a background. And you can add as many more blossoms as you want. The cool part about spring is that all the blossoms aren't in yet still starting and you can still see some of these bare branches and if you wanted to you could go back and fill in some of those more wispy spots I like it I like how it looks so now oh I think I've added all the cherry blossoms in my orchard that I want so now I'm gonna work on my background a little bit so I'm gonna grab my markers and I want to add some green because I love all the green I'm seeing outside right now a nice like kind of some rolling hills in the background and if you have to get underneath some of your cherry blossoms that's okay but I'm just gonna fill it in so I'm just taking my green and I'm kind of outlining where I made those trees I'm just gonna fill it in I get some nice green grass and if you don't want to use markers for this, you could use colored pencils, you could use crayons, you could use oil pastels, whatever you have. We have markers in this kit, but if you like the way colored pencil looks or oil pastels, something to add some extra texture to it, you can do that also. I'm using the side of my marker, not the tip like that so I can fill it in a little faster. But you take your time, give it some thought, go as slowly as you want. I'm just doing it kind of quickly so you can see. Maybe you don't want to add green behind yours. Maybe you want to add some houses in the distance. Maybe you want to add some more small trees in the distance. That would be kind of cool. Maybe you want to add a path. On this one, I put a little path in the background with some grass. That's what I love about these art projects so much is there's so much that you get to decide about what your project looks like. It's really your time to shine, your time to be creative, your time to come up with ideas. Here, so I just put some kind of rolling hills behind mine. So now, like you can see on this one, I just kind of went back in with my fine tip permanent marker and I just added a little bit of texture to my grass. So I think I'm gonna do that today too. So just kind of like with making those branches, I'm just gonna make it kind of wispy. Sometimes I like to add little curly cues to my grass. Can you see that? Just 
doesn't have to be all over. It just helps give your grass a little bit of texture. Make it a little more interesting. It can come off and shoot off at the top too. This grass isn't perfect either. I had smudged a little bit of my brown paint. So I'm just gonna cover it up with some grass. Nothing is ever going to turn out as perfectly as we want, and that's okay. You can always turn your mistake into something beautiful. Happened a little bit more over here. I smudged just a little bit of brown paint. And like I said, you can always wait for your paint to dry completely before adding your blossoms. I just wanted to make sure you guys got to see all the different parts of the project. So, <laughs> I think I like that. There you go, can you see that? So there is my orchard of these beautiful, gorgeous cherry blossoms. And my pasture behind it. So if you think you are done, this is one thing that I think is very important for you as an artist to do. Grab your fine tip permanent marker and just find a little spot for you to sign your name. I'm gonna do it right here. I always just sign my initials. But I think it's really important for you as an artist to put your name on your beautiful creations. All right, I cannot wait to see how yours turned out. All right, everybody. How did yours turn out? This is how mine turned out. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. So I decided to make my picture the landscape way, going horizontally, and I decided to do a bunch of cherry blossom trees. And I added all my little cherry blossoms to the top. I added a little pasture in the background, and I used my fine tip permanent marker to just add a little bit of texture, a little bit of patterns, add some details to the tops of my trees. Maybe you made it like this. Maybe you made it like the first one. Maybe you made it just one big tree in the middle to focus on. Maybe you put a path in the back. Maybe you decided to make it vertically, like this one. And it had lots and lots and lots of big branches coming up. Maybe you added a little face to it because your tree's so happy that it's springtime. I cannot wait to see what you came up with. Please like and share your photos with us. We would love to see them. Share them with us on Instagram, on Facebook. Shoot us an email. We would love to see what you come up with. Bye.